Okay, gotta get this done quickly. Uh, chapter six. Both Team Akokanon and Team Searchlights were making their way through the passage still, as Ariorus is seemingly doing much worse than earlier. He had his hand against his forehead and his other arm wrapped again, wrapped around Felicius to keep him steady. Felicia had her tail wrapped around him, trying to comfort him. In an attempt to try to make things easier in the poor miastic, the rest of the Pokemon attempted to keep quiet, or at the very least not make too much noise. Sandra was steadily walking alongside Lampiri, who was close to Nihia. Laura was behind them, going at her own pace still. No matter how hard Sandra tried to keep from thinking the Zubat attacked him earlier, he couldn't get it out of his head. So those things, they weren't there, but they were? They came from the dark air in the dungeon? But what does that even mean? He thought. Knowing versus not knowing was becoming something of like a pet peeve. The less he knew, the more it reminded him of out of, the, out of the element he was. It almost made him feel like he didn't belong, which he didn't, after all. Uh, he doesn't quite know that for sure yet. Deciding he had enough wondering to himself without getting a solid conclusion, he inched his way around Lampiri without her noticing and stood between her and Nihia. As he was about to ask, he immediately stopped himself. All right, Arioris, I'll just have to be quiet then. Uh, can I ask you something, Nahia? He asked quietly, looking up at the Zangus. Hmm, of course you may, looking down. He replied, looking down at the boy. What did those Zubat attack us? Nahia thought for a moment. Sandra couldn't tell if he was trying to find the right words to say or figuring out how to explain something so complicated to a child like himself. As I said before, they were what we call phantasms. They're sort of like ghosts or illusions. They're there, but not really. They're not people like you or I, and they don't tend to have personalities or distinct identities. Tend to? Sandra asked. Then he had thought visibly for a moment, realizing perhaps he got ahead of himself. I'll start over. What makes a mystery dungeon a mystery dungeon is the miasma that resides inside it. It is a plethora of things, most notably causing phantasms to appear and seemingly changing the layouts of mystery dungeons themselves. How does that work? No one really knows, unfortunately. Sometimes pathways can appear, disappear, and reappear on different visits, even as you go about exploring. They all manifest in different ways. In this dungeon, earthquakes cause the pathways to disappear and reappear. Or like avalanches or something. That's not quite the right word. You know what I mean. So it's possible for us to get stuck? Oddly, no. There's always one entrance and one exit. They're, they're always both accessible at all times. Sandra nodded. Okay, so that makes me feel better. Nikia smiled a little, further trying to reassure him. So there's nothing to fear, especially not in here. But what were you saying earlier about the phantasms themselves? It all seems to depend on what dungeon you're in. Like I said before, phantasms that appear here are very weak, but that's not the case for all of them. Lempiri raised her hand as if she wanted to get a turn to speak. Yes, Lempiri? Dad says, Lempiri began, that the fog around Camino Lake is protected from bad guys. Are phantasms bad guys? Nikia nodded. That would be correct. The barrier protecting that town is because it is covered on all sides by Winding Woodland, a dungeon. Winding Woodland's not a dungeon, Laura said, rolling her eyes. Yes, it is, though not all of it entirely, Nahia said. That doesn't make any sense, Laura replied. I technically live there. I've never seen any of those things before. Only deeper into the forest does the miasma tend to appear, if that clears anything up at all. Oh, Laura said, crossing her arms. Sure, I guess. So does that mean they can't leave the dungeons? Sandra asked. No, they cannot. They can only go where the miasma is that spawns them. If the me of whatever can't leave the dungeons, does that mean that means the phantoms can't leave either? So then why are people at the lake so worried about anything getting in? Laura asked. Oh, I think I know that one. Lampira raised her hand again. That's because way back in the day, Miasma once leaked up to the dungeons and threatened the whole world, but that's when the legendary team temperament stopped it. It's just a kid's story, isn't it? Laura asked. Lampira pouted. Dad tells me it's absolutely real. Whether or not it's real, Nahia said, that is indeed the reason why Carmino Lake obscures itself with a border of fog, among other things to prepare for potential threats. Like having the Carmino Guard, Lempiri chimed, looking proud. Exactly, Nahia said. Um, Sandra mumbled, feeling like he was intruding. You still never answered my question from earlier, about phantasms tending not to have personalities. Of course, I was going to wrap back around to that, but I wanted to give you back one first on everything else. In short, occasionally guardians of mystery dungeons can be created. They have names, personalities, and distinct appearances. When one appears, they have to be disposed of by exploration teams. But they're stuck in dungeons, right? Because it's not really excuse enough to just leave them, but they can't really do much, can they? 
Yes, but in that story in Lampiri mentioned, it was said that too many of those guardians existed at once, and they were somehow able to spread the miasma outside of the dungeons. Even if it's just superstition, it's better to deal with them as they come. Sandra took in what he said, though felt a little scared. I'd say, I'd hope I never run into one, but that'll be a short-lived wish. You seem troubled, Nahia said. I'm still worried about Arioris, Sandra added, even though that, even though he didn't realize what realize he was speaking out loud. So am I, Nahia replied. His headaches get to a point every once in a while where they're completely unmanageable. He's in terrible pain, and there's nothing Felicia nor I can do. Sandra thought for a moment. Something else ended up falling out of his mouth after a minute. Is the noise what really causes Arioris' headaches? After speaking, he paused for a minute. That was the last thing I was questioning. Was it really bothering me that much, too? Nahia looked down. Yes and no. Felicia are aware of all Felicia and I are aware of all the causes, though her and I cannot speak for him about it. What he shares with you about it is his choice. So he lied. Sandra fried Sandra fried. Sandra frowned, deep in thought. I understand. The two didn't really have much to say to one another after that. After a while of walking with, with more or less complete silence, the team eventually met a roadblock, a wall, with two paths leading to the right and left, respectively. Well, we're dead, Laura said. We're not dead, Arior said, suppressing both his teammates and team searchlights. Oh, so you can talk, Laura replied. Har har, Arior said. You know, we were lucky it was this straight of a shot like the last couple times we went through here, he said to his teammates specifically this time. Ari, are you okay enough to... Felicia began, but he was cut off by Arioras. I had to do some heavy lifting around here, he replied, smirking, trying to seem like he was all right. He walked to the head of the group and put his fin index finger up to his party, signaling them to wait. He listened closely to see if he can give them a hint as to where to go. Hey, I think I feel wind coming from the wall, Arioras said, turning back to the group. I think some boulders fell away at this old path. That could be likely, Nahia answered. So now you're taking my suggestion of digging your way out seriously, Laura said. Not that digging for no reason would have helped us at all either, kid, Arioris replied. I could try digging, Nahia said. Lampiria, if you could stay behind me while I dig, I would appreciate it. Got it, the squirtle chimed in. Please be careful, Sandra said without thinking, embarrassing himself a bit. I will, I will, Lampiria said. Felicia nodded. You two should go on ahead a little. We'll be right behind you in case something happens. That sounds like a plan, Nahia answered, equipping his claw weapons again and using crush claw onto the wall to dig a new path through. It wasn't too long after Nikia began digging that the group ended up seemingly making notable progress. The room he happened upon was large and very, very wide. There were many tunnels leading into it and out of it, including a new one that he himself had made. Nikia carefully entered the room and surveyed around. Nothing met his eye, so he turned to the rest of the group. All clear. We found the room that leads to the exit. The rest of his team and team searchlights filed into the room. So I was right. The old path ended up being blocked. Ariora said. Well, no use standing around here. Congrats on making it through your first mystery dungeon, by the way. Yay, we did it! Lampira cheered. She turned to... So I, my earbuds fell. <coughs> she turned to Sandra and shot him a huge smile. He returned it, feeling relieved. So the exit's up there? Laura asked. Yep, so that just means... Ariora began, though he fell silent. Oh, shit. What is it? Nahia asked, his voice staying steady, but his face having a hint of alarm. I knew that was too easy. Laura mumbled, annoyed. I was wondering when someone would take notice. A voice sounded, startling team searchlights and putting a coconut on high alert. They looked up where the sound seemed to be coming from and two yellow eyes met their gaze in the darkness. A guardian? Nahia said in palpable disbelief. Wait a minute, Nahia squint, er, Arior squinted. Does he sound familiar to you guys? Felicia gasped. The guardian from the ruins? After she said that, a figure dropped from the ceiling and landed in front of them. He looked similar to the Noivat they fought before, though his face was fully visible and his wings, instead of being on the smaller side, were rather large, and they were blue on the insides and black and purple on the outside. That's correct, the figure replied. How is that possible? Nahia asked, mostly to himself. I am merely here as a thank you, a recognizable face for you three. <laughs> I will fix that because we can kick your ass into the shadows again if you want it that badly, Ariora said. Felicia stood herself in front of Team Searchlights. Stay behind us, we can handle this. The Noivern laughed. This is a day you won't soon forget. The wind picked up around the group. Whatever your kids do, stay the hell away from that guy. He's prepping Hurricane, Ariora said as he used helping hand on his teammates. 
Teen searchlights did as they were told and hung back, standing against the dirt wall of the room. Nikki had tried striking the phantasm with crushed claw, but the flap of the Noivern's wings completed the hurricane attack and sent Nikki a flying. He hit the ground with a loud thud, but managed to get back up. Felicia stepped in quickly with a body slam, knocking the opponent down for just a second before he stood back up and hit her with a sharp slash with his slash attack with his wing, the air slash causing her to flinch. Nikki had flanked the Noivern from the side, but is again punished, punished with a hurricane attack. Ariorus pushed the Neuron away with Psychic, but he broke free from the telekinesis by using an attack that caused a dark wave of energy to be fired at Ariorus. The dark pulse hit quite hard and caused him to hit the floor. Sundra stood in horror, unable to speak a word or move a muscle. Then Perry clung onto his arm and buried her face in his shoulder, putting her head between him and the wall. Laura stared forward, though quickly turned to her teammates. We have to help, she said, seeming brave through her fear. If we're a team now, we gotta help. Once Felicia stopped flinching, she tried to run up to the Neuvern to push him down with play rough, but in getting close she got hit directly with dragon poles and fell to the ground. Felicia, damn it! Ariora shouted, what the hell is going on? Sandra knew she was right, and Lampira did too. They both looked at each other. Lampira tried to steal herself, and Sandra mirrored it. We, we should help. We have to, Sandra said. Let's do this, he shouted, trying to psych himself trying to self suck his teammates up and himself, especially himself. And then he and Felicia both tried approaching the, approaching the Neuron again. He was about to attack them before getting interrupted. A thwack sounded throughout the cave. Laura had used Bone Meringue and caught the club as it came back to her. You guys need some help. We absolutely do not, Ariora shouted, annoyed. What the sh- The Neuron turned his attention to Laura and fired a dragon pulse, which she dodged. Felicia hit the Neuvern again with body slam, and Nikia attacked right again after with a quick precision strike upward and then back downward, completing the aerial strike attack. Aerial ace attack. The Neuvern tried to push Nikia and Felicia away, and anyone else with Hurricane. He didn't hit anyone, as Teen Searchlights and Nikia and Felicia jumped backwards to dodge. Lampiri fired a bubble attack at the Neuvern. It didn't seem to phase him, but it seemed to cause him to move slower. Now we're talking, Ariora said, using Helping Hannigan and his allies. Give him hell! Nikki and Felicia carefully closed in, Nor using Boomerang from a distance to get a hit in, and Lapiri did similarly with Bubble. Sunder wished he could do something similar, but all he knew how to do was tackle, so he closed in behind a Neuvern, hoping he wouldn't be noticed. The Phantasm tried to use Dark Pulse, but before he did, Felicia struck with Sucker Punch. She took the brunt of the Dark Pulse. Nikia struck again with Crush Claw. Sandra slammed herself into the Neuvern with Tackle, to which both fell to the ground. The Neuvern, now with his speed reduction worn off, grabbed the boy and flew up in the air with him. He used Dark Pulse so he couldn't be psychic back to the ground for a moment. Felicia tried, to, tried body slamming the Neuvern, but barely missed. She ended up hitting the ground and skidding across it before barely managing to get back up again. Sandra screamed. Sandra! Lampire cried. Laura tried to throw a thick club at the foe, but missed. Nikki had a similar thought, using X's or by slashing the foe, by slashing the air in an X formation in front of him. To fire a similarly shaped projectile at the foe. This too also missed. I think X scissor has a hyphen in it. Yeah. Gavin says it does, so I, I think it does. Neuvern glared at Sandra. You, it growled in a low voice that only Sandra could hear. You do not belong. Sandra didn't know what else to do, so he headbutted the Neuvern, which caused him to flinch and drop Sandra. Felicia sprinted towards him and managed to catch him before he hit the ground. As the foe was flinching, Ariorus grabbed tightly hold grabbed hold of him tightly with psychic and slammed him down to the ground. This hit was enough to finally cause the phantasm to fade. Did we do it? Sandra asked carefully. Yes, we did, Nahia said. Ah, I think Ariorus mumbled, clutching his head. I think I'm gonna before he could finish his thought, he hit the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Let me change it. Thank you. Felicia cried, Ariorus! She quickly did put down Sandra and went to her teammate's side. Nahia joined her there. He's just passed out, Nahia, uh, Felicia said. She picked him up and carried him on her back. Is he going to be okay? Lampiri asked. Absolutely, Nahia said. He just needs some rest, as do we all after that. I'm so terribly sorry. I had no idea that this would happen. It's okay, I think, Sandra said. Are any of you hurt? Nahia asked. No, I think we're okay, Lampiri answered. Aren't you going to thank us for helping? Laura asked. Of course. Nikia said. Thank you very much for helping. However, no, Nikki, we needed the help. He was so much stronger than before. Felicia mumbled, her ears lowered. Fel uh, Nikia nodded, looking contemplative. You're right. Thank you very much, Team Searchlights. After another moment of catching their breath, 
the teams continued on their way.